I now recognize Chairwoman Lisa McLean of the Healthcare and Financial Services Subcommittee for her five minutes of questions. Thank you. Um, just to be clear, uh, Republicans aren't demonizing ESG. It's a free country. If you want to invest in ESG, invest in ESG. Um, I, I do think we are talking about being honest and transparent. Um, I think that's really the gist of this hearing. So I would like to start with you, Mr. Isaac. In your written testimony, you tell a story about how a Credit Suisse pressured a client to make a positive public statement about the Paris Climate Accord in return for facilitating their transaction. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, I've got a copy of the, the actual text from the email here that Credit Suisse First Boston was in, enticing, coercing, forcing this business entrepreneur that if they wanted to do a business transaction, if they wanted to fund another business to create more opportunities, to create more jobs, that they would, were concerned about his social media and that he needed to tweet some things. And I was most concerned with their alignment with Paris. This body, the United States Congress has not ratified the Paris Treaty. It is not the law of the land here in the United States, but to force an American entrepreneur to admit that his company will comply with that is, is just mind blowing to me, but they put it in writing uh, in order to so, complete so a transaction. Can you, 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 who is they? This is the global go, go. energy and transition. But, but is this the person I'm looking for, like Susie Smith? Do we have a name associated with this? Because this is amazing to me. Yeah, it is the Credit Suisse First Boston. I would imagine now former because of their collapse do, do, that they experienced. And I don't have a name. It's the chairman of global energy and transition. I mean, that's, that's pretty aggressive. To, to yeah, me. yeah, and to list four bullet points. I mean, of could you imagine this if this tweet. was some other function other than ESG, we would be going wild right now. Absolutely, uh, it's uh, been uh, the knee. Yeah, it's again. I'm not really sure that that's the fund manager's job, but at, at any rate, um, I'd like to f ask another question: Who exactly enforces ESG compliance at these companies? That's arbitrary. There's multiple different companies that do ESG ratings, and as you and Chairman Fallon have alluded to, the very the ratings vary by company. You'll see Chevron with an A rating from one company, a C, and, and then an F from another. Perhaps. When, do you think it has something to do with maybe coercions if they oh, if they tweet absolutely. positively it's, or negatively? Yeah, the climate cartel is at full work, and right. that's why companies like FTX had z no board. They did not have a governing board, but had a higher ESG rating than ExxonMobil. Interesting. Don't the let the facts get in the way of a good now. story. Uh, um, are, are these ENG, uh, ESG compliance um, officers, so to speak, is it an internal to the company or are there outside groups that no, they're coordinating it, with? No, you look at companies like ISS, the Investment Investor Shareholder Services, and Glass-Lewis. These are two brought to the duopoly of proxy voting firms that control over 90% of the market have become major ESG promoters. So these are the companies that are actually voting the shares for the largest institutions institutional investors, which 19 of the largest 20 institutional investors are public pensions. And ISS and Glass-Lewis are voting their shares and aligning with their personal ESG political agenda. Okay. I'm going to switch gears for one moment because I want to piggyback and, and stick with the facts because, again, return on investment is supposed to be factual. There's risk mitigators in there, right? It, it's not an idea or ideology. Um, one of my colleagues earlier said that ESG is a more efficient investment strategy. Mr. Moore, would you like to comment on that? Because I, I would think it's the opposite. In fact, the data that I show is ESG is not a more efficient strategy. Do you have any comments on that? Um, there are scores of studies. Look, there are studies on both sides, but the predominant number of studies show that um, ESG investing, just like any social investing a technique, reduces return because you're just limiting the number of companies you can invest in. And so let me just give you one little Please. example. What do you think was the top returning industry of the Fortune 500 last year? Oil and gas. Guess what the ESG companies did? <laughs> they divested in oil and gas as their stocks went way up. Now, oil and gas isn't doing so well this year. I mean, so you can always cherry pick the data, but over time, um, these these uh, social investment return, ESG policies reduce returns to the shareholders. And that, that can mean, look, you know, I can't tell you how many people I've heard from since we did our study saying, you know, 
look, this is my retirement money. You know, I've worked my whole life to, you know, maybe buy a home in Florida or Arizona right. when I retire, and this is costing me thousands of dollars. And so people are upset about it, and they're upset that they didn't even know about it. And therein lies the problem. Just be honest. And I'm going to say it again. If you want to invest in ESG companies, by all means, you have every right to do so. But let's just be honest and transparent. Thank you.